Item number SCP-6078, Object Class, Keter, Special Containment Procedures. During manifestation event, all passenger vessels traveling within 50 kilometers of SCP-6078 are to be redirected. All satellite imagery taken between the hours of 0 and 1159 Greenwich Mean Time during manifestation event is to be edited with all images of SCP-6078 removed. Any suspected civilian sightings of SCP-6078 are to be intercepted by Mobile Task Force Omega-54, the Flying Dutchman, with a Class A amnestics administration to all witnesses. Any anomalous items discovered on SCP-6078 are to be transported to Site 234's containment wing. Information and technology may only be exchanged with SCP-6078 inhabitants with overseer approval. By overseer request, no further attempts at removing SCP-6078-A from its place of burial are to take place. Description SCP-6078 is an island with an area of 750 kilometers squared, located roughly 300 kilometers off the west coast of Ireland. SCP-6078 has been depicted on maps dating as far back as the 10th century, where it has been variously identified by names such as Brazil, Brazil, and High Brazil. Archaeological evidence suggests that SCP-6078 was first colonized by Gaelic settlers at some point during the first millennium BCE, and the island is currently populated by approximately 35,000 non-anomalous humans. SCP-6078 occupies a Category 7 pocket dimension, only transitioning to baseline reality for a 24-hour period between 0 hours 1 minute and 23 hours 59 minute Greenwich Mean Time once every 4 hours, hereafter referred to as a manifestation event. Between manifestation events, SCP-6078 is surrounded by a thick mist, and the area occupied by the island is instead immersed underwater. Additionally, travel to and from SCP-6078 during this state is impossible through non-anomalous means. Any vessel which travels further than 25 kilometers from the island will vanish and we materialize at an adjacent point on the island's shore. Despite its extra-dimensional status, SCP-6078 is affected by local meteorological and seasonal patterns. Although SCP-6078 receives a severely decreased amount of sunlight, native plant and animal life have not been found to experience any adverse effects. The inhabitants of SCP-6078 speak a previously unknown Godelic language, structurally similar to Old Irish, and the island had been politically unified under an absolute monarchy for at least 1400 years, the incumbent ruler being King Finn XII. Despite numerous attempts at Christianization between the 6th and 9th centuries, the inhabitants of SCP-6078 continue to practice a unique form of cultic polytheism to this day. Due to its isolation, SCP-6078 has experienced little social or technological progression beyond a roughly Iron Age level of development. Since its discovery, however, the Foundation and the Global Occult Coalition have been steadily introducing its inhabitants to modern medicine and the scientific method, and provided limited information regarding the state of the wider world. Local historical records suggest that SCP-6078 anomalous properties first manifested at some point in the early 12th century, on a date colloquially known as the Day of the Ravens. This is consistent with the fact that the island had been portrayed on far fewer maps since 1150 CE, and with less accuracy regarding its precise size and location. 
the inhabitants of SCP-6078 celebrate the day of each manifestation event as Dermot's Day, a holiday named in honour of a former king. The date is typically marked by the island's inhabitants with music, dancing, feasting, and consumption of alcohol. Addendum 1. The following is an account of the life and reign of King Domut, provided by the Foundation's Department of Mythology and Folkloristics. All details herein are derived from native SCP-6078 scholars, as well as local religious and historical texts. Dumut the Ageless The Mythical King Dumut the mythical King Demut is identified as the final king of SCP-6078 to rule prior to the manifestations of its anomalous properties. Sources consistently describe Demut as a fair and just king, who was born on a leap day, and as a result, aged only one year for every four, later earning him the moniker of Demut the Ageless. The Moot is said to have seven wives, each of whom he married seven years apart. The first of these was Uma, an old witch who used a magical potion, causing her to appear young and beautiful in the eyes of others, thus earning the king's love. However, her reflection remained unchanged, and when the Moot caught sight of his new wife in a silver mirror he had received as a wedding gift, he demanded an immediate separation. The heartbroken Uma subsequently took her own life, although not before placing a curse upon her former husband, causing any maiden the king wedded with to die tragically within a year of their marriage. The names of several of the Moot's wives had been lost to time, although his second is said to have died from hysterical laughter at the antics of a royal gesture, while another is reported to have died after being accidentally decapitated by a bronze slaughter. Note, all used in ancient Celtic sport of hurling, out of which the Mood claimed to have been one of the island's most experienced hurling players, never picked up his playing stick again. His fourth wife, Arian, is described as having possessed the we just voice in all the land, out singing in the wood one day, wearing a white gown her mother had sung her. Arian was heard by a hungry hound, which had strayed from its pack. Certainly that such an enchanting melody could possibly have come from mortal lips, the hound, after witnessing the flutter of Arian's white dress through the bushes, attacked, having mistaken the queen for a swan. The beast tore deep into the queen's leg, leaving her severely wounded. A hound, having realized its tragic mistake, subsequently threw itself into a nearby lake out of grief, and Evian subsequently in her Darmut's arms from her injuries. The king's fifth wife, Tiona, died four months into the marriage, shortly after her younger brother, Dufflin, fell ill with the dreaded violet fever. Note, a fatal illness described in a number of SCP-6078 ancient medical texts, so named due to supposedly causing its victim's irises to turn into a luminescent shade of violet. Whether this ailment existed at some point in SCP-6078 past, or is purely fictitious in nature remains unclear. Devlin is identified as Chiana's favorite brother, for when she was a child, and had fallen into a river during play, none of the children, save Devlin, were bold enough to dive in and rescue her. As the disease was contagious, Devlin remained confined to his bedchamber. After consoling her grieving parents, Tiana visited her brother without her family's knowledge, and planted a single kiss on his forehead while he slept while Devlin would subsequently make a miraculous recovery. His sister died of the same condition the following night. Seven years later, Dermot married his sixth wife, a fair yet faint heart of all Dermot's queens. Hers was the shortest reign. 
dying from shock on the wedding night, upon seeing the size of her new husband's genitals. The aged king's servant and most documented spouse was Queen Coma. Try as she and her husband might, they were unable to bear children, and against her husband's wishes, Coma sought the assistance of a local witch. A witch offered a solution, before inquiring as to whether Coma would prefer a son or a daughter. When the young queen voiced her desire for a baby girl, the old witch presented her with a silver seed, which she instructed her to plant in the royal garden on the night of the next full moon, before providing it with three drops of milk. The witch promised that if Koma consumed just one of the flower's petals, she would become pregnant with a baby girl, although warned her under no circumstances to eat more than one of the petals. Weeks later, Queen Koma did as advised, and as predicted, a silver flower appeared early on the next morning. After eating a single petal, the queen found the flower to be so delicious that she consumed all twelve at once. This stops in judgment caused dire consequences for Koma and her husband, and in the following months, her belly grew so large as to leave her bedridden. Shortly thereafter, the queen gave birth to a total of twelve daughters, all at once, dying from exhaustion shortly afterwards. Having lost seven lovers throughout the years, the moot never married again and remained fiercely protective of his dozen daughters, refusing to marry them off to any of his kingdom's noblemen. One fateful morning, King the moot, who was by now over 120 years old, although still physically a man in his twenties, went for his morning hunt, alone as he often did, his supernatural longevity causing him to have outlived his nearest friends. Upon his return, the moot found his palace had been ransacked by a race of barbaric invaders, described as hailing from a mysterious northern land where the sun does not rise. The stars cannot shine, and the moon is too frightened to show her face. This date is remembered in local literature as the Day of the Ravens. As it is said that every raven in the land perched atop Kingdom Wood's palace that day, as a stark omen of events to come. With his daughters captured, his finest soldiers dead, and his people hopelessly outnumbered, the moot set out to a nearby temple, which he found that, like his palace, had been ransacked for its gold and precious jewels. The moot prayed before the gods, begging them for the strength to defeat the kingdom's invaders. After seeing the king's plight and having witnessed the cruelty of the island's attackers, the gods transferred a small spark of divine energy into the mortal's body immediately. The moot underwent a monstrous transformation, growing five times larger and ten times stronger, his mere glance capable of inducing fatal seizures in his foes, and his touch capable of melting the flesh from the bones. The moot single-handedly slaughtered countless waves of warriors, and with his heightened vision, spied the longship carrying his soon-to-be-enslaved daughters. The moot caused the ship to erupt into flames, killing all warriors on board, though not before turning his twelve daughters into swans, thus allowing them to fly to safety. While his domain was safe once more, the god's divine spark had taken its toll on a young king's health. The powers of a deity are not meant to reside within the mortal framework and by the time the last longship had retreated from the island's shore, Kingdom Wood was a death store. With his last ounce of supernatural strength, the king removed his cloak, which he threw to the skies, encircling his kingdom and permanently sealing it from the rest of the world, thus protecting it from all future threats. It is said that once every leap year, his twelve daughters, still in the form of swans, lift this immense veil for a single day 
allowing the light of the sun, moon, and stars to shine upon the late king's subjects. Addendum 2. On the 10th of September, 1910, during an archaeological dig in SCP-6078 Northmost Province, an anomalous human corpse, since designated SCP-6078-A, was discovered buried in an unmarked grave beneath a small bed of black roses. While estimated to be in excess of 800 years old, the body showed no signs of decomposition and displayed an estimated temperature of 65 to 70 degrees Celsius. The precise cause of death remains indeterminate, although the body showed no signs of fourth degree burns and multiple cancerous growths were found located on the face, limbs, and torso. Following this discovery, several members of His Majesty's Foundation for the Secure Containment of the Paranormal attempted to remove SCP-6078-A for further study. Reportedly, this resulted in a spontaneous manifestation of roughly a dozen swans, which proceeded to attack all personnel present, causing one death and leaving several injured. Following this incident, no further attempts at excavating the remains of SCP-6078-A have taken place.